of databases. Uh, you get your flat database and your relational mm -hmm. database. The only one you sort of know about is our relational database. So our flat database is the one you won't see a lot of. It's not an ideal type of database. And then your relational one is the one you'll find out much more about and you'll see it much more in questions. So a relational database is one that's got multiple tables and all of them are sort of connected to each other. So your flat database is one that looks like this, where you could have song information, information about the artist and artist information all just in one line. So you'll see there's a lot of repetitive. So if the same song or a song is made by the same artist, all these details are duplicated. So what I could have done, this is a flat database. If you look at it at the relational one, you could have one with all the, the data of all the songs and then just with who the artist is. And that will then link to the artist themselves plus their background. So you could have rather made it in multiple tables. So you'll see the amount of information that's stored is a lot less if you compare to this, where this is only from one, two, three, four songs. So imagine there was that amount of songs. So this would have carried on a lot longer. So it's not ideal, it's very slow, and it uses up a lot of storage space. So this is our relational database, multiple tables that's related and it's much better. Okay, each table consists of fields and records. A record is basically each row, so that each of these rows are records, and fields are columns, so these are your fields. So you get your artist name and duration and all that. These are fields and these are records. Each table has got one compulsory field and that's called the primary key. And that's our unique identifier. So that is the field that will uniquely identify each record. So like in this case, it might be the title of the album that will be unique. And in this case, it might be the song name combined with the artist that could be unique. And this might be the artist name that's unique. So you'll have that one field that uniquely identifies, and that's called our primary key. Okay. Then characteristics of a good database. So you can read through that, but the main thing is you should not repeat data. Multiple users can use it. And then the main one that we want to look at is data integrity. Data integrity is how accurate and consistent the data in the database is. So basically what they mean also is that nobody interfered with the information or that they did not manipulate or somebody didn't hack in and change the information they weren't allowed to change or steal information and stuff like that. So that is our data integrity. Data independence refers to the separation between the data and the application. So this it's like our database we create in Access and our program we create in, in Delphi. So the program that we created does not necessarily only have to work with that database. It could work with a similar uh, or different database, but that's got the same structure. Data redundancy refers to having the exact same data at different places in the database. So you don't want redundant data. So you don't want just large amount of information that carries on repeating itself. Data security. So how well the data in the database is protected from crashes, hacks, and accidental deletion. And then data maintenance. It refers to the monthly, daily, or hourly tasks that's run to fix errors within the database and prevents anomalies. So with anomalies, we'll have a look at that now, but... So these people are the people that actually has an effect on our database. It's our developers, administrators, and all of them. They all have got an effect on how the database is run. So problems that we just said now that we could have with the database are anomalies, and we get three types of them. The insert, delete, and modification anomaly. Insert anomaly, the database has been created in such a way that required data cannot be added unless another piece of unavailable data is also added. For example, a hospital database that cannot store the details of a new member until that member has been seen by a doctor. So that's not a good program because as you know, if you go to a hospital, 
a lot of times you first check in and they create all the paperwork for you and then you go to see a doctor. You can't be seen by the doctor first and then they want to create the, the file for you. So that is an insert anomaly. That's not a good thing. You would want to be able to create a new member without him having seen a doctor as yet. A delete anomaly, the legitimate deletion of a record of data that can cause the deletion of some required data. For example, deleting some of the patient's details can remove all the details of the patient from the hospital database. So let's just say one um, client or one patient does not want to be with the doctor anymore. So he says he's going away from Dr. A. And then the hospital, because that patient's not Dr. A anymore, it removes the complete patient. Even though that, doc that patient might have just moved to Dr. B, who's in the same hospital. So that would be a delete anomaly, where you delete information that should not be deleted. They only wanted to remove the doctor that the patient was seeing. But by doing that, they actually removed the whole patient. And then modification anomaly. The incorrect data may have been changed, which could involve many records having to be changed, leading to the possibility of some changes being made incorrectly. So that if you change one thing in one table, that it actually affects the information in other tables as well. And then that whole modification goes through the whole database. So if we look at this option, problems, the data redundancy, there's an update anomaly, the data will be inconsistent if one entity is updated. For example, if the family address changes, the data capture will need to change four entities. So you'll see it's four people of the same family. So if this family moves now to another town, they can't just update one, they have to update all four members of the same fam family. And you'll see actually it's two people, but because they've seen the doctor, most probably, oh, it's account name. It's probably the mother and the father of the one child and the mother and the father of the other child. So, but when information is changed, now we need to update a lot of records. So you would want to ease that. Okay, then there's some examples. How to get rid of anomalies. So we have to, the main thing that's this to do that is called normalization. So when we're normal, normalizing a database, we're trying to remove all these things. So there's different stages of normalization. There's actually a lot. You guys only need to know the first three. So let's look at them. So things you need to know is our primary key we set, which is that unique field that uniquely identifies each record. Um, a foreign key field, that is when the primary key of one field is in another table that creates a link. Our composite key, that is when more than one field is used to become a primary key. If you've got no field that's unique, but a combination between two fields become unique, then we've got a composite key. And then an alternative key is a field containing unique values that could be used as a primary key but it's not currently set as the primary key. So that's just if you've got an ID number and a client number, for example. Both could be the primary keys, but you're only using the one. Okay, so our first normal form. Okay, each column must have a separate field or attribute. So each column in your table should not contain multiple values. So it's sort of like when you've got an address, you should not have um, the street number, street name, town, and town code all in one field. That's not good. Values stored in a column should be of the same kind or type. So in each column, the values stored must be of the same kind or type. So that is inside the, if we've got the town field, all of them should have the town name in. Some fields shouldn't have town, town name and the others the town code. They must be same type. All the columns in the table should have unique names. All the columns in the table. So you shouldn't have more than one column with the same name. So like if you've got a child's name and a parent's name. You can't use name for both of them. And then the order in which the data is stored does not matter. 
Okay, so main thing for the first normal form is actually this first one. We must make sure that each column has got separate information or not multiple information in one column. For second normal form, first normal form should be in effect and then it should not have partial dependency. So this is where the attribute of a table depends on only part of the primary key and not the whole key. So this only happens when there is a composite key. If you've got a composite key on two, tab on two fields, but the one piece of information only refers to the one prim primary key and not both, then you should actually separate them. Our third normal form, it must be in second normal form, and then you do not want transitive dependencies. So that is when a field is dependent on another field which is not the primary key. So that is our, like the one that we said about the, it could be an alternative key, but it could also sometimes just be where, like in the example of the town that I said, where the town code or the town name actually depends on the town code. So that's got nothing to do with the rest. So that should have actually been in a separate table, not with the student or staff information for that matter. And then there's some activities. And that is our database.